with IPSEC, we do something else. We have the ability to allow an administrator to rewrite, replace, or add new profiles to that IPSEC client. Now, you may already have an existing IPSEC deployment. You may have multiple head-ins. You may have many users. And now you've decided, okay, I can do a better job securing my VPN using SecureAuth. And you can designate the profile names that we will go in and rewrite and bind to the certificate authentication. This means that we're not going to go and we're not going to wipe out other stuff that that client may have configured. Maybe it's a contractor, maybe it's an employee with uh, profiles for other Cisco IPsec connections. We are not taking a sledgehammer. It's a finesse solution, administrator controlled. We can completely replace existing profiles. So if there's an Irvine IPsec profile and the administrator decides that Irvine has changed, maybe it's going to get a new IP address. Maybe you're migrating ISPs and you don't want to have to create all new profiles, redistribute it in an IPsec installer and have all of your end users reinstall IPsec, or maybe you don't want to build them and email them out and have people drop them into the right directory, or maybe you don't want to have to provide written instructions to have your end users go in and modify the connection profiles to work with the new connection parameters. The administrator can simply have them go through enrollment and replace those profiles. Or let us say that you've added a new VPN entrance point for your network. We can add new profiles as well. So not only have we found a way to secure the IPsec connection, but we've also created an administrative tool that can reduce the administrative burden of the IPsec client, period. And this is what we do. We're eliminating the shared secret password. We're binding it to a certificate that, that will not be able to leave that system using very specific data so that there is no confusion. And this is part of the magic. We go in, we rewrite these things, we bind them into the strong authentication, and now you have strong security and you have a whole new administration tool. Now, as I've mentioned, we integrated this first with Cisco's SSL VPN. A lot of people are afraid to deploy SSL VPN because of the security model. They don't understand it or they haven't tried it. Maybe it's not tried and true, it hasn't been around as long, but I'll vouch for it that it is a very strong, secure solution. Adding a certificate to that and using some of the other tools in the Cisco SSL VPN can extend the security of a Cisco SSL VPN, B, VPN beyond what your IPsec client currently offers you. And, it, and, and it, without any doubt, you can extend the security of your SSL VPN beyond what you have for IPsec. Additionally, SSL VPN offers a lot of new tools. A lot of your end users may only be using web applications. Why do they need to connect to the network and expose your network to malicious software? Some of your end users may require network connections. Cisco has deployed the new AnyConnect client, which is able to provide IPsec-like functionality through SSL. And it is the way of the future. In fact, IPsec clients can't run on 64-bit Windows operating systems. The security measures that Microsoft has put in place and the way that they've locked down the system does not allow for what's called that kernel-level driver to be able to load. So for 64-bit Windows systems, AnyConnect is the only solution. Now, SecureAuth can be deployed using that SSL model that we have created as, uh, um, for the enrollment gateway so that you arrive at the SSL VPN and you're able to go in through the enrollment. That is one excellent way to protect the enrollment. It can also be deployed in your DMZ as a web service. Now, if you decide that you want to secure your IPsec using certificates, 
in this easily managed end-user self-service model, it also immediately provides you with the strong authentication credentials that you would want moving into a migration to SSL. It gives you the opportunity to create a secure model so that you can experiment with the SSL VPN, find how it can reduce the cost and improve the ease of use for your end users for your organization, and now migrate them. Or maybe you don't want everybody moving at once. You have legacy IPsec, you want to start deploying certain services on your SSL. This is a great way to provide stronger security to both of those access methods with better administration and man manageability of your IPsec clients now than, than you would have had before using the secure auth product. Now additionally, as Christian mentioned earlier, secure auth integrates with web applications as well, OWA, SharePoint, other web services. We can do a lot with secure auth and it, the credentials that are deployed for use by IPsec and for use by the SSL VPN, not only are those compatible, those two remote access services, but those same credentials are compatible across the product line. So you can have an end user internal to your network who enrolls for internal SharePoint access to sensitive data, and that means that they're already enrolled for their IPsec or their SSL VPN. Or you can have an end user who enrolls their laptop while they're on the road and then comes back into the organization or you have OWA that is uh, on the DMZ and they're already enrolled for that. So we've created a model where you can leverage your secure auth deployment across your applications, across your remote access and provide for strong authentication for what you do on the net. 